Hey there, internets. Welcome to Expired Films. I'm Kevin, and I'm here to show you another interesting pinhole camera. So one of the first pinhole cameras that I made, um, I found a video on YouTube about how to make uh, six-month pinhole exposures, and I thought doing that kind of solography was really cool. That idea kind of got spun off. Um, I was looking at uh, the Art of Photography podcast, and there is a piece there called Sunburn that was being highlighted, and I was like, oh man, I really want to be able to... Uh, take make some photos like that so uh, obviously that's a little bit above my pay grade currently but um, some solar cans however are not so what I did is I collected a bunch of 16 ounce drink cans uh, I actually don't consume anything that comes in these so I had to get them from friends and co-workers um, and produce pinholes so uh, the aperture size here is a lot less specific than if you're building a pinhole camera for film uh, where you're going to take actual quick snapshots. Um, these are out for so long that the paper basically auto develops and the size of the aperture is really a lot less important. Um, most of the construction is, but it's pretty easy to build. Um, I will link to that video in the description. Um, the long and short of it, uh, using something like a P38 or a can opener, you remove the top, wherein you can put a 5 by 7 inch piece of paper uh, lined up to the pinhole that you create in the front. Um, I used uh, two pieces of black electrical tape to make the shutter. Then you make a waterproof cap using construction paper and a waterproof uh, tape. I use duct tape and you have a pinhole camera. So this needs to be affixed for some period of time on something relatively stable, uh, a tree, a signpost, somewhere it's gonna be uninterrupted or even set in a window. Uh, if you're in the Northern hemisphere like I am, you would want to point this at the Southern sky uh, in hopes of getting some solar arcs. I've built six or nine of these and I put several of them out um, however they are not permanent and even here you can see I have a, a label there which contains a phone number and an email address um, but that still wasn't enough from getting someone who thought it was suspicious from cutting down one of my cameras and throwing it away so that's a bit of a bummer uh, but some of the images that you can produce out of these are pretty interesting this was actually my very first uh, image out of one of these cameras. It's a four day exposure. As you can see, I missed the sun entirely. Um, this really kind of helped me start to get a feel for how wide the camera is. This is out of an office building near where I work on WVU's campus. And if you see on the far right, uh, as this building pinches off towards the horizon, there's three little ripple bumps. Those are 12 story buildings that have been so radically condensed in size they just look like bumps on top of another building. So if you'll really uh, condense space in this very, very interesting way. Here's one that I presented as a diptych. So I took this image from two sides of a building and tried to catch the solar arc from each, each direction. So an entire office building lies in between these two diptychs. They were taken separately, they're just kind of presented this way. I was taking a lot of half frame 35 millimeter photos, film photos at this time, and so I was kind of into diptychs and triptychs, and that's kind of what I produced here using these pinhole cameras. So this is also a four day exposure. Um, as you can see, uh, through some post processing, I kind of had to tweak a little bit. There's a lot of fall off in the corners, and then you have this chromatic aberration from the solar arc, which is recorded in the photo paper. So this image is from a can such as this. It is pointed at an old rail bridge uh, and a small waterway. So one of the things that you'll see is that there's some pretty heavy barrel distortion. The film is on a concave film plane, so it's wrapped around. So the center is pretty reasonable, and then at the, the further you get to the edge, the more distortion you see. So this camera was actually bumped at one point, which is why you see two solar arcs. Um, and a few other fragments that are doubled. So uh, I didn't secure this one as well as I could have, but this is a 17 day long exposure. What's really neat about these solar cameras, uh, each day or each uh, period of days will appear as an arc across the sky. So if there's cloudy periods or cl whole cloudy days, you'll end up with gaps. Mm -hmm. And you can leave these out for six months to a year um, or any length of time that you'd like. Really four days is kind of the shortest it takes to get uh, an interesting kind of meaningful image. Uh, this one was about two and a half weeks and uh, I took them down after my other one got cut down. So some of the color variants that you see occur um, 
as part of the auto developing process. They're basically chromatic aberrations. This is black and white uh, photo paper. And you don't have to do any chemical developing. You can bring it in dim light straight to a flatbed scanner, scan it, and then do your digital post production. This is one of my favorite ones. The chromatic aberration here is pretty interesting, and I really like the way this one came out. This is another one that I set up on the same day. This is uh, the WVU Coliseum in Morgantown, West Virginia. One of the things that was particularly interesting, this is heavily cropped in. Um, I was nowhere near close enough to the structure, and I was still getting a feel for how the camera condensed space. So in this case, I was probably 30 to 40 yards from the structure, and all of this image is basically in the bottom quarter of a 5x7. So um, pointing your camera is kind of an intuitive effect. You're just sort of pointing the pinhole in the right direction. Um, but don't worry about getting too close. You almost can't get too close because it looks so far in every direction. So these little solar cameras are really interesting. There are a few companies that purchase uh, that sell them if you are interested in purchasing them instead of building them your own. Um, however, they are pretty cheap and easy to build as well. The only thing that you'll need is 5x7 black and white photo paper, and that can be had. It's a little bit pricey, so if you have a couple people who are purchasing it or you're going to go through a lot of it, you're better off to purchase it in 100 sheets at a time rather than 25. Um, but it's a pretty interesting way to get into this process. You don't have to do any chemical developing if they're out for a while. So it's really, uh, there's almost no overhead cost if you're interested in getting into analog photography or you're interested in pinhole photography and you're really not sure how or how much to jump off. Um, this is a very low threshold investment. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend it highly to you. So thank you for tuning in to Expired Films. I'm Kevin, and this has been another interesting pinhole. Thanks.